Hi guys and welcome to this, the last lesson in this whole measurement geometry section that we're doing today. So, proving similar triangles. Huh? Prove? What do you mean prove? I don't have to prove anything. What's it all about? Well, basically, you do if you're gonna want to do well. Proving this stuff, and this is building on from the lesson we did last time, or the video you just watched, uh, or maybe you haven't watched it. If you haven't watched it, that would be a bit random, because I would be making no sense whatsoever. But if you are proving similar triangles, well, an examiner wants to see certain things written down. Those of you who have the distinct pleasure of being taught by me, lol, then that's the questions you're going to need to have done by the end of this video. If you are in the advanced core methods group, anyone who does not understand what I'm talking about, that worries me. If you are watching the internet land, hi, welcome. Hopefully you're going to enjoy this lesson as much as you hopefully enjoyed all my others. Last time we looked at similar figures, and if you remember, a similar figure is one where you can take a triangle, multiply it by the same value. So if this was 2, 3, 4, then 4, 6, 8. To go from each of those triangles, I'm taking the original one and multiplying every single side by the same multiplier. Then they are similar. So a similar triangle is they are exactly the same triangle. They have just been multiplied. One has been multiplied by a scale factor or a ratio to get to the another one. We sort of built on the work from congruent triangles, where congruent triangles meant they were identical, the same. Thank you very much. Now, again, just as a quick recap, for congruent triangles, if the sides are all the same, if two triangles are there side by side and it is obvious the sides are the same length, they have to be congruent. If two sides and one angle are the same for two triangles and they share two common sides and one common angle, it's got to be congruent. Likewise, two angles and one side are the same. That should say, uh, 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 uh. And a right angle, the hypotenuse and one other pair of sides are the same. All right, so... We're now going to look at this uh, about to use the help idea for proving similar triangles. Same idea. So first things first. First rule, side, side, side. So as I've said here, for a triangle to be congruent, both triangles have to have sides that are exactly the same length. For triangles to be similar, remember similar triangles are taking one triangle and multiplying every single side by the same number. Then what we say is for triangles to be similar, they have to have three side lengths which are the same ratio to each other. So, we looked at last lesson idea calling one the original and one the image. We had the idea that a ratio was equal to the image divided by the original. And so when I take any of these, two divided by 20, three divided by 30, or four divided by 40, they are all in the ratio 1 to 10. Now I know I said here they are divisible by 10. That's looking at the other way. But in this situation, if I was going to do any of this, I would have 3 over 30, which was 1 over 10. That tells me my ratio to go from my original to my image is multiplied by 1 over 10. So the ratio is multiplied by 1 over 10, which, if you is good at maths, you know means the same as dividing by 10, hence divisible by 10. So Side, side, side. That's one rule that we can prove uh, similarity. The next one, side, angle, side. Now we've said for triangles to be congruent, they have to have two sides which are exactly the same length and share one angle, which is exactly the same size. So for triangles to be similar, bearing in mind we're now dealing with ratios of sides, it would suggest that they need to have two sides in the same ratio and one common angle. So if this is my uh, original, and this is my image, are the ratios the same? So ratio is equal to image divided by original. All right, so ratio, let's say of the five, so we've got five over 15, that's equal to one over three, and it is four divided by 12, the same as one over three, yep. So they are the same ratio. Is the angle between them the same? They both say 60 degrees, and so I could turn around and say, yes, S-A-S, -S. that rule has been applied here. Oh, thank you very much. Then we get angle, angle, angle. For triangles to be congruent, they have to have three angles which are the same size. Now, funnily enough, 
for similar triangles, they also have to have three angles which are the same size. If you think about it, it doesn't matter about my small triangle and my big triangle. If I've multiplied all the sides by the same length, please don't think the angles will get multiplied. That would make no sense. Angles can only ever add up to 180. When you make triangles bigger, they just stay the angles the same. So this angle here, and this angle here, and this angle here, and this angle here, and that angle there, and that angle there, will still be exactly the same size when their triangles have been multiplied. And so that's what we say. In this situation, if we look at my two examples, they obviously appear bigger. In fact, from my diagrams, they obviously appear totally different triangles, but the angles inside, don't criticize my drawings. They are the same, the angles are the same, so the sides must be in the same ratio, and as such, they are similar. And the last one is this RHS. For triangles to be congruent, the right angle, the hypotenuse, and one other pair of sides have to be the same. So the only difference for similarity is the right angle, the hypotenuse, and one other pair of sides have to be of the same ratio. And by that, I mean the sides have to be the same ratio. Right angles aren't going to get any bigger. They're always a right angle. So looking at this one here, we have a right angle the same. We have hypotenuse, so that is of the ratio 2 on 12, which is 1 over 6, if we did it that way around. And here, 3 on 18, 3 divided by 18 is also 1 on 6. Are these the same? They is, I should cocoa. Now, the point of this whole exercise is that you've got to prove it. Now, to prove similarity, you have to, have to, have to write four statements. Why four statements? If you go back here, how many letters does this have? Three, RHS. How many letters, if we wrote this simply, would it have? AAA. How many would this have? Three, SAS. And how many would this have? Three as well, which is SSS. So the four statements will include one thing that says whether the sides are the same, in fact, so if we had SSS, for example, we would write and prove something that says one of the sides, one pair is the same, another pair is the same, another pair is the same, and then you would write a similarity statement. This is what the examiners are looking for. They are looking for four lines. This whole thing is about proving your understanding. And so they've given me two sides and an angle. So I'm obviously doing side, angle, side, and I want some sort of similarity statement. Right, so first things first, let's look at one of the sides. Is DF divided by AC the same as EF divided by BC? I should cocoa. So the first side I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say DF divided by AC, because they're the ones are in ratio, is equal to two. And I'm gonna say for my other side, uh, EF divided by BC is also equal to. So I've got my side sorted, I've got my side sorted. Do we have a common angle? We absolutely do. So I can now say angle ACB is the same as angle DFE. And I can use that shorthand. My similarity statement says using SSA or SAS or whatever, we know triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. Now you don't necessarily have to write the triangle because we would just know that, but that is what you have to write, those four statements. What about this one here? With this example here, you might think we could use the RHS rule, right? Because I can see a right angle. In fact, I can see two of them, so that would make sense. But remember, the RHS rule says you have to have a right angle the same, which we do, tick. We have to have a side length that is the same, Ah, uh, we don't. And we would have to have the hypotenuse the same. So we don't have that information. So in this situation, we can't use the RHS rule. So, ah, uh, what I can do is, what do I notice? I have a triangle inside a triangle, which means that when I have a triangle inside a triangle, that angle is shared. We know that that's a right angle and that's a right angle, so that's two angles that are the same, which would suggest that those two would be the same. I can use angle, angle, angle. So that's the one I'm gonna use, angle, angle, angle. 
that's now what we're going to use to help write my similarity or prove my similarity. So first things, they share an angle. So we know that BAE and DAC, remember, angles are the ones in the center, are the same. So I'm going to write an A beside that because that's proven that one of my angles is the same. We know that BE and CD must be parallel. So ABE, so ABE, which is basically angle B, and ACD, which is basically angle C, are also the same. So there is A. And because three triangles, uh, three angles in a triangle have to add up to 180, we would automatically be able to state that AEB and ADC which is basically angle E and angle D, are also the same. There is my three things, and I would have to write this statement here. Hence, using rule A, 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 the triangles are similar. A, B, E is similar to A, C, D. Lastly, you don't have to write. I know I kept being asked last time, do we have to write all this language? Oh, tragic. So much to write. You have to write, you can write in shortcuts. So again, here is an example where we have a triangle connected to a triangle. We know by using fuzzix that this angle here and this angle here is the same. Why? Because we have a Z. And where there is a Z, angles in the corners are the same. That angle there and that angle there are the same. That angle there and that angle there are the same. And so because those three angles are the same, once again, we use AAA. And I can shortcut this and say... Angle ACB and DCE are the same. Angle ABC and angle CDE are the same. And angle BAC is equal to angle DEC. They are the same. And so hence, using AAA triangle ABC is similar to triangle CDE. Wow! Now, what may have seemed complicated from the beginning, hopefully, is just you trying to say, okay, you've got to look for, is it? Uh, SSS, SAS, AAA, or RHS, and then try and fit the actual line of working to show that you can prove that angles are the same or hypotenuses are the same, and then just write that similarity statement. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next topic. It's been so great having you watch this video that I'd like to see you again and again and again. Wow, we could make some amazing maths together. So if you'd like to, and you'd like to be updated as to when I upload new videos, why not subscribe by clicking the button on the right? Otherwise, if you want to click and see another video created for this type of series, then click the video on the left. All right, well, you have an awesome day, and I look forward to see you again.